Karnak in France is arguably one of the largest megalithic complexes in the world, and it's also pretty famous. Overall, we're talking thousands of standing stones, several dolmens, and some enormous tumuli. A team of archaeologists has carried out radiocarbon testing on samples from a previously unknown section of Karnak that was discovered five years ago. The results of their study have just been published in the journal Antiquity with some rather interesting conclusions. For context, let's start by discussing the Karnak alignments, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in Brittany, France. Erected in the Neolithic, although the exact dates of its various structures aren't known with certainty, Karnak is made up of three huge megalithic alignments and one smaller one, as well as a number of tombs. Large amounts of artefacts, including the largest reported density of European greenstone objects, have also been excavated there in the past. The true enormity of Karnak is better understood when viewed aerially. These alignments likely formed one giant complex originally, but a lot of material has been removed over the years for reuse elsewhere. Menek is made up of 11 rows of standing stones and covers an area measuring more than 1,000 by 100 meters. It's not far from the Saint Michel Tumulus, a large mound covering stone dolmens that were found to contain funerary furniture, flint artifacts, jade axes, pottery, and jewelry. A chapel was built on top of the mound in the 17th century before being destroyed, rebuilt and destroyed again. The current building is a reconstruction. Roughly northeast of Menek is Kermario, with more than 1,000 standing stones divided into 10 columns, stretching out over around 1,300 metres. By the way, these four sets of alignments are on a rough northeast to southwest axis, but other stone rows in the area that look to have been connected to these, as well as other separate complexes, are all on different orientations, so I'm not sure if that is significant or not. Yet further to the northeast is Kerlaskan, that's made up of over 500 stones. They are divided into 13 rows and stretch out over 800 metres. Their stones vary in height from almost 1 metre to as much as 4 metres. Interestingly, there's also a stone circle made up of 39 uprights to the west of Kerlaskan. Hidden in a forest lies the Petit Menek complex, which is a lot smaller than the other three. The stones there are covered in vegetation now. All of the megalithic structures were made of locally sourced weathered granite. Of course, those of you interested in the Neolithic will know that Brittany has many other megalithic monuments, some of which are quite spectacular. For example, six kilometers northwest of Karnak near Plu Arnel are the Saint Barb and Vermoulin alignments, which are stone rows as well, and to the east lies the Broken Men here of Egra, a monolith that once stood at over 20 meters in height alongside 18 slightly smaller standing stones. It's one of the Loch Mariake megaliths, which also include a huge covered dolmen and a tumulus, so it's no surprise that yet more megaliths have been uncovered in the area. The exact chronology of the many megalithic monuments in Brittany isn't clear because 19th century excavations were not so well documented and organic material does not survive well in the acidic soils of that region, limiting the opportunity for radiocarbon dating. However, the discovery of a previously unknown section of Karnak associated with surviving charcoal samples that could be radiocarbon tested has revolutionized our understanding of megalithic construction phases in the region. In 2020, the planned construction of a business park led to rescue excavations being carried out at La Plasca, west of the Karnak alignments, by a team at Archeodunum led by Audrey Blanchard. The area is relatively flat, sitting as it does in a paleo valley on the edge of a granitic plateau. It lies two kilometres west of the Menek alignments and 1.4 kilometres southeast of the Saint Barb alignments in Plu Arnel. The closest alignment to the site is Le Vermoulin, which sits 800 kilometres to the northwest. 
These maps are really helpful in showing just how many megalithic monuments there are in Brittany and which ones form alignments. At La Plasca, archaeologists revealed six phases of activity starting in the Mesolithic, which include a pre-megalithic tomb, cooking pits and foundation pits for standing stones that once formed part of Karnak. Phases 1 and 2 are dated to the Mesolithic from 5699 to 5075 BCE. During that time, an oval feature was dug into the ground surrounded by a ditch which contained granite blocks that may have been used to stabilise wooden poles. Three monoliths were found close to the ditch, all of which sit on the same sedimentary horizon as a nearby cairn, therefore they must have been erected prior to its construction. One of these monoliths has a possible anthropomorphic form. The authors of the paper suggest that the oval feature is what remains of a Mesolithic hut. A flint arrowhead was also found in the northern part of the site that dates to the Mesolithic. Five charcoal samples from this section of the site date to a brief period identified as the phase one occupation and three samples date to phase two. The site was then abandoned for around 300 years before being reoccupied during the Middle Neolithic between 4790 and 4640 BCE. At that time, a monumental tomb was constructed on top of the remains of the Mesolithic structure. The tomb was made up of a circular mound measuring 3.3 metres in diameter, covering a quadrangular kist oriented northwest to southeast. No skeletal remains or grave goods were found inside the kist, but its small size indicates it was built for one person. To the south of the monument, covering a radius of 20 metres, the traces of 46 monoliths were found. These are made of granite, excavated from rocky outcrops around two kilometres away. They were placed with their natural surfaces facing upwards. Six oval-shaped pavements measuring between one and two metres in diameter were also excavated close to the mound. One of these was radiocarbon dated to the same time as the kist. Four of these pavements were likely foundations for standing stones that had flat bases, and the other two appeared to be spoil left over from the construction of, or possibly as a result of partial demolition of, the mound. Two cooking pits containing charred stones were excavated to the north and east of the monument and show that some sort of activities took place there at the time it was constructed. When the tomb was built, or slightly later, standing stones were erected to create several north-south alignments. This phase 4 dates to between 4668 and 4368 BCE and several subphases have also been identified. Although the standing stones are no longer extant, foundation pits with wedging stones were found. The researchers aren't sure how tall the uprights were, but they can estimate that they stood at around 3 metres. Nine of these pits yielded charcoal samples from short-lived trees such as broom, malloid, hazelnut and oak, which were then radiocarbon tested. The partly overlapping seven subphases are shown in this layout. This figure outlines the differences between the oval pavements, the foundation pits for the standing stones, and the hearths to further clarify how they were categorised. Cooking pits, mostly contemporary with the standing stones, were found close by. Two may have been created slightly earlier. Some of them appear to be in alignment with the uprights. Phase 6 dates to between 4250 and 4050 BCE, a time period referred to as the recent Castellic or Middle Neolithic II. During Phase 6, two cooking pits with charred stone hearths were in use, and it's possible that the standing stones were still upright or present and incumbent at that time. The La Plasca site is located one kilometre from the seashore today. When it was in use starting in the 5th millennium BCE, the sea level was around 5 metres lower, so the shoreline would have been several hundred metres further away. However, the flat topography of the area means that the standing stones would have been visible from the sea. From the highest point of the site, the sea would also have been visible, so this may have played a role in the choice of location. Few artefacts were discovered at La Plasca, just a few lithics, some ceramic sherds, and a sherd etched with an arch motif that is thought to belong to the late Castellic period. So La Plasca was an important site for more than a thousand years. 
As has been found at other places in Europe, a Mesolithic site was later reused and the decision to build there was likely because of this early structure. The tomb is unusual in that it lacks a surrounding ditch and a vault above the kist, architectural elements present at other contemporary mounds, so its discovery is important for understanding the evolution of such monuments. It's not clear if all the fire pits were for cooking, and if they were, it's also not certain if they were for communal feasting rather than for small groups. It might also be that some of them were used to illuminate the standing stones. Analyses of lipid residues, phytoliths and environmental DNA are being carried out to gain further insights into these fire pits. The chronology of La Plasca is important because it shows the evolution of the site from a pre-megalithic tomb into a series of megalithic alignments. In short, the researchers conclude that the megalithic landscape was dynamic, encompassing periods of construction both short and long. Although they touch on what the fire pits may have been used for, they are reluctant to go beyond that and discuss the purpose of the megaliths themselves. That is not what this paper is for. However, if I had to guess, I would say that a remarkable funerary complex emerged over time, perhaps commemorating the ancestors with feasting playing a role in that. But I do wonder why the ancients built alignments with so many thousands of standing stones in the Brittany region, with nothing quite comparable elsewhere. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please hit the like button if you didn't already. A special thank you goes out to my channel members and patrons, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.